Shalom. I'm Eddie Chumney of Hebraic Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you to this week's Focus Israel Report. In this week's report, we're going to be sharing with you regarding the current status of the Israeli-Palestinian peace process and the details of an agreement by the P5 plus one powers and Iran over its nuclear program. First, the peace process. Palestinian prisoners who were convicted of killing Israelis and then released by Israel recently as a goodwill gesture to restart direct peace talks were given at least $50,000 apiece as well as a comfortable monthly salary from the Palestinian Authority. Depending on the length of their jail term, the prisoners received more cash. Those who were held over 25 years were entitled to $50,000, in addition to the position of a deputy minister or promotion to the rank of major general in the Palestinian security forces, both of which earned them monthly wages of nearly $4,000. Those who spent less than 25 years in Israeli prisons received a similar bonus as well as promotion to a deputy directorship in a government ministry or to the rank of brigadier general with a monthly wage of $2,800 on the Palestinian authorities payroll. Meanwhile, Palestinian spokesman Nabil Abu Radena, following a meeting of the Fatah Central Committee, said that Israel's building Jewish homes in the West Bank in East Jerusalem is a crime against humanity. As a result, Israel Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alan said that the Palestinian Authority, often touted as Israel's peace partner, is no different from Hamas in the Gaza Strip in its quest to undermine Israel, explaining that Hamas simply uses different methods to achieve this goal. To date, I've never heard any Palestinian leader, including Mahmoud Abbas, willing to say that a territorial compromise, even along the borders he dreams about, is the end of the conflict and an end to Palestinian demands of Israel. Neither have we heard the Palestinian leadership say that they recognize Israel as a Jewish state and would be willing to waive the right of the return of Palestinian refugees, Ya'alan said. Their unwillingness to recognize our right to exist as the national homeland of the Jewish people in any border is the main obstacle to peace and is the root of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In any event, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called for Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas to visit the Israeli Knesset and recognize Israel as a Jewish state for the sake of peace. If Abbas would do so, Netanyahu said that he would speak in Ramallah, embracing the two-state solution. Most of the Knesset members are unified. In order for peace to be real, It must go in both directions. One cannot demand that we recognize a Palestinian national state without demanding them to recognize a Jewish state, Netanyahu said. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas said that the fate of Palestinian refugees must be resolved if a peace treaty is to be achieved with Israel. The official policy of the Palestinian Authority is to demand repatriation for the descendants of Arabs who fled Israel in 1948 to their original homes within Israel, thus flooding the Jewish state with Arab refugees and effectively erasing Israel from the map, replacing it with a secular democratic Palestine. Abbas said that this must come in addition to the establishment of a Palestinian state in the West Bank with East Jerusalem as its capital. In a law approved by the Palestinian parliament in 2008 and signed into law by Abbas, the right of return of Palestinian refugees to their homes and property, along with compensation for their suffering, is a holy cornerstone of their rights that cannot be negotiated away. There will be no consideration of negotiation on this issue, nor will there be a referendum on it, the law says. Meanwhile, in a recent visit to Israel, French President François Holland demanded an end to Jewish settlement activity and told the Israeli parliament that Jerusalem must one day be the capital 
of two states. Settlement activity must stop because it compromises the two-state solution, he said. France's position is well known, and that is a negotiated settlement with the state of Israel and a future state of Palestine, both having Jerusalem as their capital, coexisting in peace and security. He added that real peace had to go both ways by saying, we cannot ask the Jewish people to recognize a Palestinian nation state without demanding that the Palestinians recognize the nation state of the Jewish people. Also, France expects Israel to make gestures over its construction of settlements on land the Palestinians want for a future state, the French president said. There are still gestures that need to be made by both sides, Holland said, acknowledging that Israel had already taken conciliatory steps by releasing 52 Palestinian prisoners in line with its commitments to restart direct peace talks. Some gestures have already been started by Israel, that being the freeing of prisoners, he said. Other gestures are expected, especially in the area of settlements, he said. Holland said that he would raise the issue of gestures expected from the Palestinian side also when he met with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. In addition, French President Holland's speech to the Israeli Knesset, which began with fanfare and ended with a standing ovation, stuck to mostly non-controversial messages, but sparked the ire of some Knesset members on the right when he discussed talks with the Palestinians and said that Jerusalem must be the joint capital of Israel and a future Palestinian state. Recently, Chief Palestinian Negotiator Saab Arakat submitted his resignation to Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas regarding being a member of the peace talks with Israel due to a lack of progress in them. However, Abbas has rejected his resignation. If Arakat insists on his resignation, Abbas said that he will search for someone else to head the Palestinian negotiating team. Furthermore, Muhammad Shatea, another member of the negotiating team, also submitted his resignation, but his resignation is not expected to be withdrawn. As a result, Shatea is not expected to participate in the next round of direct peace talks with Israel. Despite the resignation, Abbas said that the Palestinians will continue peace talks with Israel until the end of the nine-month period set by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry comes about. Abbas said, we have committed to continue the negotiations for nine months, regardless of what happens on the ground. We are committed and we will go the full nine months and then we will make an appropriate decision about what we need to do at that time. Palestinian sources indicate that the Palestinians still intend to renew efforts to join the United Nations and other international agencies and organizations. However, Palestinian officials said that it would be best to do this when the nine-month agreed-upon period for the peace talks is over in April of 2014 in order to not be blamed for the failure of the peace talks. In any event, Palestinian Executive Committee member Hanan Ashrari said that the Palestinian leadership should prepare to turn to the United Nations without waiting for the failure of negotiations with Israel. Because of disappointments with the United States over the issue of building Jewish homes in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, as well as a proposed deal by the P5 plus 1 powers with Iran over its nuclear program, Israel Foreign Minister Evigdor Lieberman said that Israel should not rely on the United States as much as it has traditionally done so in the past. He added that Israel's foreign policy for many years went in one direction, and that is toward the United States. But my policy has more directions, he said. Lieberman went on to explain that he's trying to build connections with countries that are interested in Israel's high-tech innovation and don't depend on the Arab world. Regarding the peace process, Lieberman said that those who want Israel to make painful concessions in any peace agreement with the Palestinians, including territorial concessions, come from people who don't know the history of the conflict or the facts of the conflict. He added that settlements weren't an obstacle to peace with Egypt or Jordan. On the other hand, 
Israel evacuated settlements in the Gaza Strip and got rocket fire from Hamas. Historically, there is no connection between settlements and peace agreements, he said. In response to Lieberman's comments, Israel's Justice Minister Zippy Livni criticized Netanyahu for so warmly welcoming the French president while being in conflict with the Obama administration. Livni said that Israel appreciates the French effort for being opposed to the current terms of a proposed nuclear deal with Iran, but hinted that this cannot be allowed to be interpreted as coming at the expense of friendship with the United States. France's stance came from the knowledge that a nuclear Iran is dangerous, not only to Israel, but to France and the rest of the world, she said. But we cannot forget that our strategic alliance is with the United States, and even when we have disagreements with them, Israel must maintain that friendship and alliance. Livni noted that having the United States as Israel's primary ally has enabled Israel to maintain its military superiority in the Middle East. She said that advancing diplomatic talks with the Palestinians would also contribute to Israel's long-term security. Next, I'd like to share with you the details of an agreement made between the P5 plus 1 powers, that is, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, the United States, Britain, France, Russia, and China, along with Germany, who came to an agreement with Iran regarding their nuclear program. The details are as follows. After all-night talks, a first-step nuclear deal was struck in Geneva, Switzerland, between Iran and the P5 plus 1 powers. It was announced by U.S. President Barack Obama and confirmed by Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zarif. Obama said key aspects of Iran's nuclear program will be rolled back for limited sanctions relief. No new centrifuges will be added to the enrichment process. Work will stop at the Iraq nuclear reactor. And the United Nations will expand inspections to ensure that Iran is unable to make a nuclear bomb. The overall sanctions architecture will remain in place pending a comprehensive solution to be negotiated in the next six months. But no new sanctions will be imposed. Israel and Saudi Arabia said before the deal was signed that they were not bound by its provisions and reserves their military options. President Obama said he understood the concerns of Israel and the Persian Gulf nations about Iran's intentions and promised to closely follow Iran's compliance and as commander-in-chief of the U.S. Armed Forces that the United States will maintain its option for military action. Offering no information about the content of the interim accord, the Iranian foreign minister commended the Geneva process for granting the Iranian people equal footing and mutual respect, and the deal as a first step toward removing all doubt about Iran's nuclear program. None of the measures revealed so far regarding the Iranian nuclear deal reached in Geneva concerns itself with the concealed military features of Iran's nuclear program or the details of expanded inspections. Israel is not expected to accept any document with those omissions and will no doubt continue its preparations for exercising a military option. The nuclear deal signed between the six world powers and Iran has seven major loopholes. They include the following. The Parchin nuclear facility will not be a part of United Nations oversight. Number two, there's no mention of dealing with Iran's secret nuclear locations. Number three, dirty bombs. Iran doesn't need a full-scale nuclear bomb or missile warhead in order to attack Israel. Number four, Iran is still free to produce as much fissile material as it wants, whenever it wants. Enrichment. Iran is still able to enrich uranium. Number six, centrifuges. Iran is still able to keep up their production of centrifuges. And finally, Iran is able to boost its stock of 3.5% enriched uranium, thereby accumulating enough material to enhance its capability for producing enough weapons-grade uranium to break through to a nuclear bomb rapidly enough to defy detection by the International Atomic Energy Agency. Well, that's going to conclude this week's report where we shared with you regarding the current status of the Israeli-Palestinian peace process and an agreement by the six major world powers 
and Iran over its nuclear program. Until we do it again, Shalom in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Amen.